Good afternoon, people. What's up? Today is day 7,000 of uh, the universe. Um, yeah. Alright, let's try the intro again. What's up? What's the happenings? Alright, today, yesterday we tried some blade handles and we threw them off the machine. Good times. Today we're going to take a, uh, we're going to diverge from that. We're going to work on that pry bar I talked about in the beginning of yesterday's video. Here is what we're going to be working on. Oh yeah, she's a beauty. Not very long, only five inches long, and I'm thinking that may be too tiny. I have made one prototype before, but it didn't look like this. It was slightly different, and so yeah, it's going to be made out of tool steel. The tool steel I have is... Um, 55 HC, so on, as far as Rockwell hardness, I have no idea what that means, but I know that that's pretty hard. So we're gonna machine it in that, that hard state. And yeah, so let's talk about, what else are we gonna talk about? When we're gonna do that. I still have to set up the cam for it. Um, oh yeah, let's go try. So I have a tumbler. I have one of those vibratory tumblers from uh, Harbor Freight, obviously like everyone with the, which, with the, uh, whatchamacallit, um, the stones, the ceramic stones. So what I wanted to do is try out a piece of just regular mild steel first. I have a big bin of mild steel first and see how the actual finish comes out. Okay, this, this is gonna work, this piece of square tube. So you can see this is regular piece of welded square tubing that's cut. And what I did was I, like I said, I have those ceramic stones in here. And I added a little bit of WD-40. I buy WD-40 in like the big, big gallon. So you can kind of see we added a little. And this thing is super loud. So I'm just gonna run it while I'm doing the cam work because then I can shut the door. And uh, yeah, I'm curious to see how that turns out. I've run this, so I've run the ceramic media with water in there, but I realized if you run it with water and you do tool steel, it rusts like immediately. So we're gonna do this. Man, it's loud. Machine's all warmed up. So I'm gonna go ahead and work on the cam and then we'll get right into um, this, this pry bar thing. Cool, sweet. All right, about 20 minutes. So let's go see how this thing turned out. Probably not long enough to really see any difference, but what's well, allowed? Huh. It smells like WD-40. I must have forgot to put the drain. Oh yeah! Oh, that's some expensive fluid on the ground. I forgot to put the, the drain in and the thing. Oh boy. It, it doesn't end. Anyways. Rude. Ooh. Oh, that came out kind of cool. It's full of Ceramics. Oh, it's very full of ceramics. They're, they're stuck in there. Look at that finish. I don't know if you guys can see that. That looks sweet. Hell yeah. I bet if you left it overnight, it looks super sweet. Alright, that's good. I'm gonna go find the, uh... Oh, man. I'm gonna go find the, uh, the lock for the, uh, hose for that thing. <laughs> and refill it, and then I'll get get right back to it. All right. Well, I couldn't find the uh, thing for that, so I just stuck some RTV in it. Now we're cutting our tool steel. I'm gonna do the cam for for this for this guy, and uh, this should be a learning experience. 
All right, guys, this took me forever, and it's probably going to fail hilariously, but here's what we got. Face, sweet. Pocket that, because I don't have the right drill, which is going to be horrendous. Uh, adaptive clear the stock around it, which is kind of crazy. So let's. Then we're gonna adaptive this wall. Then we're gonna contour the outside wall. Then we're gonna do this inside pocket, which is probably also gonna go bad. I don't think we're gonna make it here without something going wrong. Then the ball end mill is going to come to a contour, scallop, scallop on the outside, then a trace, and then we'll have it sitting in the stock. And then I don't know how to get it out of the stock, so we'll <laughs> figure that out when we get there. So I'm going to post this, measure the tools with the tool setter, and I'm going to close my eyes and hit go. We are definitely going to have to wear glasses for this one. This is going to be... Quite the experience. Okay. <laughs> right, so I wrote the tools down in my hand because I'm very forgetful and I'm just gonna go through them. Most of them are already offsetted, but I added and changed a few and I'm just gonna go through the majority of them just in case. Conservative feed rate of 20 at 2,000 RPM. I don't know if it's rubbing or cutting, but it hasn't exploded yet, so that's a good sign. I did a pass extension for one inch, so it should come all the way. Oh, okay, yeah, that's totally normal. All right, now we're gonna do this pocket, which. I don't think this is going to go that good. So we're going to go 50% feed. I think it's cutting. <laughs> I don't know. I can't hear it. I don't know if it's still there. Oh, we're almost done. Is there a hole there? There is! I think. Yeah, the tool's still there. Oh, we did it! I don't know if you can see it. Right there. Oh, it's so cute. Look at the fit. Oh my god. Oh, this is exciting. Still looks like a tool to me. All right, next. All right, I was nervous about that, but I'm also nervous about this next one. <laughs> oh, good luck. All right, we're at 50% feed for this one. I forgot high speed machining again. All right, hold on. I'm definitely going to turn on high speed machining. Silly me, every time. No, I don't think high speed machining is really gonna help us too much on this distal cab, anyways. So this is 50% feed. So I'm wondering how 100% is. Let's just slowly bump it up. 60, 70, 80, all right, there's 100. That is just like a shoulder cut though, so we'll see how it does in the actual adaptive part. It's 
just hitting me hard dogs. <laughs> that doesn't sound too bad to me. Only 20% spindle load on a um, 5 8 tool. All right, let's see. Not bad, not bad. Very nice, very nice. Here's the tool. Let's see if I, you guys can take a look at that. Yeah, it's not awful. Oh, oh, don't, don't look at this. <laughs> that, that doesn't concern you. That's not where we're looking at. All right, cool. So that's good. I left a burr, but the I got a ball in mill. We're gonna do a chamfer. I think you guys saw it. This probably should take care of it. So next tool. Oh, I don't know what's about to happen. I think it's a pocket. Hundred percent speed rate. Yeah, it didn't immediately snap, so that's a good sign. Doesn't sound like it's cutting it though. Oh, there it goes. Oh, this actually has a chip load of 1,000 per tooth, but it's 10 inches per minute at 5,000 RPM. I wonder if that's a little hot. Well, if the tool breaks, we'll know. The nice thing is like if you leave and the tool breaks, you're not gonna crash the machine. It's just not going to cut it, which is a good thing for this operation. All right, I'll update you on the finish because this is gonna take a while. Tossed another 8th end mill in there. I choked up on it a little and then I changed the feed per tooth down to 4 tenths. It was actually at 5 tenths, so I'm not entirely sure what happened. They just, the uh, tool was old or something and it grabbed something, or there's something on the tool bath that's causing it to snap. So if this one breaks, uh, I guess we'll, I'll look at the tool path again and see because uh, as much as I love breaking end mills, I'm not a budgetless uh, person here. Alright, I actually heard it this time. It definitely hit something. It must hit something when it when it moves. Because I heard a pop. Well, not a pop, but a crunching sound. Oh, there goes five dollars. <laughs> Exhibit A. Very strange. Alright, I'm gonna go stare at the tool. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, I figured it out. I was leaving 20 thou axial, and then what was happening was the cutter had to go in to do the contour, and there was 20 thousandths of an inch there, and it didn't like my feed levels, and it snaps the tool, and it would go in to do the contour. And unfortunately, I had to break two tools to uh, see that it wasn't a feed problem, but a toolpath operator problem. But that's how it goes sometimes. So, you know, we we'll just order more. They're uh, not inaccessibly expensive. They're not cheap. Jesus. They're not cheap by any means, but, you know, we gotta buy the tools to do the job. And that, that's how it goes. Alright, let's redo this again. So now what I did was I basically ran, I'm going to run another adaptive around the whole thing. And that's going to take out that stock to leave. And it's going to be super painfully slow. Let's go again. Well, I hear it cutting. I put the feed rate to 70 because after it get, gets done doing this helix, it actually has to move into the pocket and cut it. And it's not a full depth cut, but... It... 
kind of worried about it surviving, I guess. So what I've done is I've only left five thou axial. Uh, so that means, oh, you know what I should have left? Should have done five radially instead of. Hmm. Whoops. Because I wanted the contour to come up and clean the walls really nice, but obviously the walls are not on the floor, so. Oh well, I guess we'll remember that for the next one. I'm actually gonna write myself a note. Alright, so we managed to successfully do that. That took about 20 more minutes longer than it should have. So here's where we're at. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Alright. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this wall end mill and I'm actually gonna uh, put it higher up in the shank. Actually, no, I'm not. It's already good, I guess. Um, I do need to come in and do the pocket aren't deep enough, I didn't realize, because I left that, that axial stock. So I need to come in there with like a special 2D pocket and fix that. So that's what this is going to do. What time is it? 6.43. Okay, cool. So yeah, this should be a pocket. Yep. That'll go down there and fix that. And then it's going to do the contour one more time. Then it should, then we should be going on into surfacing, which should be cool, but take a while. All right, we're in the ball end mill contour now. I do uh, change the feeder to 50% because it was a little chattery, if you will. It still kind of sounds like it's rubbing. Maybe I'll up it a little. There's 70. There's 80. It's a feed rate of 40, so... So I don't... You know, I really don't know what it's supposed to sound like, I guess, with the ball in though. The step over is really tiny, but we know how that can go sometimes. Especially if there's a piece of material that the simulation didn't see, and I didn't see, because I blow through the simulation, you know? All right, we'll go to 100. I think it's my only ball end mill in 316 size, so <laughs> if we break it, then we might be SOL for the night. But yeah, the initial cuts are pretty, usually pretty hard because it seems to be deep, but then as it moves up with that high step over, or that low step over, it gets lighter and lighter, so hopefully I won't miss it when it goes into a new cut and it actually survives kind of deal. But yeah, I will post an update when we get to the finished contour. Well, we lost it, unfortunately, in a really bad spot, too. It didn't seem like it was doing anything wrong, but I guess crazy how it'd be like that. All right, I'm going to get a different ball in now, and then uh, we'll give it another shot. Oh, boy, she just finished 30 minutes long. Tool's still there. try to engrave on the back side, which I have a feeling may destroy the engraving. But we'll find out. Let it rip. Well, the tool is still there. Do you see what it says? Cause I'm poor! I see nothing wrong with this setup. Yeah, what could possibly go wrong? This is what happens when you're uh, antsy. And you want your nice things now. Whoa. 
Oh boy. You're here to witness the terrible service finish. Oh yeah. You kind of chewed the end up a little bit. Whoops, I got. Hold on. Coolant's probably not good for the lens. I mean, it's not now. It's not awful. The rest of it looks beautiful. All right. Let's take this guy out. Look at her. It even comes with a free metal chip in the middle. The coolant tastes awful. Oh, it's so cute. Don't you guys think it's so cute? Look at it. Yeah. Yeah, definitely got to make soft jaws because it caused the, that lip to bend over, which kind of, uh, kind of lame. Let me see if I can tear that off. Well, that's the best I could do with, yeah, focus. Focus, focus. All right, whatever. I'm going to tumble this for the next hour. And yeah, yeah, you can see. Because, uh, see what happens when you're lazy? And impatient. Oh, whatever. All right, I'm gonna tumble this for the next hour, but I'm gonna have the update in the next video because I'm gonna tumble and go eat something. So yeah, thanks for watching. If you like this stuff, subscribe and uh, catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching. I already said that. Thanks again.